Good morning. Welcome back to the broadcast for Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRN AM for Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021. And our top story today, protect yours and your family's privacy. Consumer scams are on the rise. Well, joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Steve Baker is with the Better Business Bureau. Steve, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Good to be here. Yeah, and, and, and really, I mean, the Better Business Bureau does a lot of things. And I think one of the areas that you all have been tracking is this increase in what I would call cyber scams and, and people taking advantage of other people and taking advantage of this COVID situation. How are you and, fo- and folks at BBB seeing things right now? Well, I mean, it's like a, those, I used to work at the Federal Trade Commission. We used to have a chairman there say, we are awash in a sea of fraud. And we are, particularly government imposter schemes where people call pretending to be from the government. A lot of the time, those really scare people. Um, they threaten to arrest people, send a squad car out to the house immediately. People are freaked out. And 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 rightfully so. And let's let's just set the the standard right now, I believe, and you correct me if I'm wrong, the Internal Revenue Service, the Social Security Administration, generally speaking, the federal government or the state government will not reach out to you directly and say, give me your personal information. No, they won't. The IRS will reach out to you by by, by mail, regular mail. Um, and unfortunately, there are massive amounts of scammers that are impersonating various federal agencies, particularly Social Security these days. And we've had some surveys show that 44% of the U.S. public has been exposed to these sorts of scams. There was one period I was getting these every day, um, and they are very, very troublesome. The crooks are really, really, really good at this stuff. They know what they're doing, and they take a tremendous amount of money. I think losses over a several-year period on government imposter scams rounded up to $450 million dollars. Um, and that's not, we tend to presume that, oh, this would never happen to us. This is just kind of old or dumb people. And I wish that were true. It's, it's not true. I mean, they get ordinary people just like you and me every day. They say very convincing. They There's no question you're going to ask that they don't already have an answer to. And they're very, very professional and they take in massive amounts of money. It's organized criminal behavior. It really is. Yeah, and and oftentimes, from my understanding, and again, you know, I don't work for the Justice Department at all, but these are people that are oftentimes out of the U.S. Uh, they are in countries that where it's hard to extradite. There may not be a legal apparatus to do so. So any type of restitution can be very, very challenging. And I agree with you. You don't have to be a super smart person. You can be a super smart person, I should say, to. Uh, had this this issue come up. I, I know of several people who are super smart, but these people prey on other people's fears and they, they're, they're like con artists, uh, Steve. Well, that's right. People forget that con artist uh, is short for confidence man, um, which means they gain your confidence. I mean, what happens in these calls? They call, they're spoofing the telephone number may on the caller ID may be actually from the FBI or social security. Um, that gives people or the sheriff's department. Um, In addition, they've got a lot of personal information, maybe your social security number, which convinced them that they're true. They say they're federal agents and they're going to have a squad car come out and arrest you um, within an hour unless you go ahead and and do what they tell you to do. And and, uh, under those circumstances, I think a whole lot of us would be inclined to, to think they're believable. They sound believable. They're professionals of what they do. And um, unfortunately, it's uh, it's it's all just to get your money. Absolutely. At the end of the day, it's uh, it, it just comes down to robbing you of something that you've earned and and uh, in, ter- in terms of money for the, as a result of your labor. Uh, you know, Steve, I was reading, and and neither of us are technology experts. So I was reading. You know, in, in terms of COVID, a lot of the restaurants moved to something called a QR code, and when you scan the QR code, it brings up a menu. But these criminals, and they are criminals, they're cyber criminals, they're of the worst order, they are actually using this technology and other technologies to take information. 
Um, yeah, no, they're the the crooks are, are they're they're like viruses. They adapt, they multiply until something happens, and until somebody can make them stop, it's hard to make them stop. So they got a variety of ways to get in, getting your money. And another variation, very recently, we've been seeing is a tremendous increase in text messages, supposedly from state agencies here here in Illinois. I've gotten half a dozen of these in the last two weeks, and my neighbors have too. So they're wanting you to click on a link, and if you do, then it either installs malware or it looks for personal information to steal from you. So they've always got new techniques involved. With the uh, social security scams, what they tend to do is call and tell you your social security number has been suspended. They are, social security doesn't suspend social security numbers. And then they put you online with supposed federal criminal agent, like a supposed FBI or DEA agent who tells you that your car was found in El Paso, Texas, abandoned or a rental car that, that you, had, you had rented with your identi identity. Um, and there was drugs and cocaine and blood found in, in the car. And so they're looking for you. And when you say, I've never been to El Paso, Texas in my life, they say, well, you must have been a victim of identity theft. Therefore, we need to take all your money. Your assets are going to be frozen. So you need to put it in a safety deposit with us. We'll be at your house next Tuesday, give you a new, a new social security number, give you a new social security number, and we'll give you your money back. And then they have people go around and buy gift cards, clean out their bank accounts, and send them their money. And of course, once they have it, they've just stolen it. Crooks love gift cards. The vast majority of people that are doing this are out of India. Um, they're using gift cards uh, to, to, to steal your money. And all too often, people fall for these things. Um, they sound very, very believable. Yeah. Steve, I need to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more to Steve about cyber, good cyber hygiene and how you can protect yourself and your family and a lot more. You're gonna to wanna to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We wanna make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Are you stuck with a low credit score? A credit report and score that's causing you to be denied credit or pay higher interest rates than others for the same things? Then do what Terrence did and call Credit Repaired for your free credit evaluation to help restore your credit. I started thinking about buying a new house and my score wasn't where I needed it to be. I called and spoke with one of the representatives and we just had a good conversation and I, I liked what he was saying. Just one call for his free credit evaluation was all it took to start back on the track to repairing his credit. I'm seeing the deletions and I'm getting the report so I know something's being done. It does make a difference to me. All it takes is one call to get started. Credit repair has given me a second chance to have a better credit score. Don't let a low credit score hold you back another day. Do what Terrence did and make the call for your free credit evaluation. 
Call 800-819-4152. That's 800-819-4152. Again, 800-819-4152. Welcome back. We're talking to Steve Baker of the Better Business Bureau, the BBBB, the B-Triple-B. Steve, thanks so much for staying with us this morning. Thank you. Good to be uh, here. Yeah, it's great. This is important. And, you know, we, we have done all sorts of shows about good cyber hygiene, cybersecurity, protecting your enterprise, your organization. You actually have a tracker on your website, which I think we'll probably be displaying as we're, as we're chatting. Um, that is a place that people can go to see some of the latest cyber crimes and, and become more vigilant and aware of these types of crimes. Yeah, so the, the Better Business Bureau is a place, free place. You can go to check out online any business, whether they're a member of the Better Business Bureau or not, see what they say about it, and you can even check and see if it's a scam business. In a di- and they take real complaints with real local businesses, like you've got a problem with your plumber, they'll help you resolve it. So it's a great service there. In addition, the Better Business Bureau has got a scam tracker where people complain about scams where there is no business to complain about. And you can pull up a map, I'll show you how many complaints there are in your particular area or neighborhood. And in addition, the, those complaints go into a database maintained by the Federal Trade Commission that helps them track down scammers. And so it's a really useful tool, really encourage people to reach out to the Better Business Bureau. Like say the price is right, it's set up by businesses to try to set themselves up. And so it's a real public service that the, the Better Business Bureau performs. Steve, are you seeing more, you mentioned the Federal Trade Commission, are you seeing government entities really step up enforcement, for lack of a better term, trying to figure out ways to, you know, outside education, which we'll talk about in a minute, are there, are there things that they're doing to try to maybe increase extradition or identify these, these bad actors to further protect, whether they're here in the U.S. or in, for example, India or Malaysia or some of these other countries? Um. Th- Fraud, particularly aimed at older people, has definitely been a priority for several years. And they've done a couple of efforts where they've announced, Justice Department has announced 200 cases. Um, in the case of, of a lot of these frauds from, from India, like the Social Security impersonators, there are people in the United States from India helping out. And so they have arrested at least 170 less of people that I've um, kept track of. So you need to watch out for 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 those. Um, th- th- it is hard to it is hard to extradite from some places. Uh, Canada, believe it or not, is hard to extradite from. I just saw this morning that they just busted a room pretending to be FBI and DEA agents in Delhi, and 63 people were arrested there. Unfortunately, India is arresting people, but they don't have a real strong history of actually prosecuting people. It's difficult to extradite people from other countries. You need some cooperation from other agencies. Um, so that's why, you know, the, the federal federal agencies try really hard on this. They're working some of their federal counterparts. A lot more could, I think, and should be done um, because people are just getting hammered on this. Your chances, I saw in the UK, your chances are five times as much chance of being ripped off by a cyber crime over the internet as they are being mugged. Um, so this is really all around us. We're all seeing it every day. We're under constant attack through emails, text messages, phone calls. Um, they're really they're really going after. One of the things that has been successful, somewhat successful, I think, is that the government has been going after the robocall operations. So to send robocalls through the internet from India, there has to be um, a company in the US that translates them into the phone system and that provides them with spoofed caller ID service. So the Justice Department has sued several of those um, and it has made a difference. There's less robocalls from overseas right now. Canada though is seeing just the same amount or more. Um, So we think that's really having an effect. I hope they'll go do more to go after those sorts of things. But the crooks are clever, they're gonna adapt. Um, For our neighbors, we all need to warn our friends and neighbors and relatives about these things, Um, particularly our older people. We need to look after their system, the ones that they tend to see for elder to concentrate on older victims, our grandparent schemes or pretend to be a grandchild. Um, 
And I saw see that they're recently started sending Uber and Lyft drivers around to pick up the money from those victims. And prize and lottery scams, who doesn't want to think that they won the publisher's clearinghouse lottery? They'll call and tell people that they're winners, and they will sometimes drag them out for months and months and months. And romance frauds are incredibly common where they meet people online and it's the long con because they may spend weeks or months communicating with people before they uh, some sort of emergency and they need money, or they encourage now people to invest in cryptocurrency and then they lose all their money. So look after your older people. There's lots of resources out there. Um, we've done a lot of studies as well at the Better Business Bureau on scams that affect older people and the adult protective service people in your community can often help with those. But do complain, do reach out, do call Publishers Clearinghouse to see if you really won. But the scams are everywhere. You've really got to watch out for it. And they're very, very believable. Yeah, and, I, and I wish I could tell you that these are rare, but like I said, and they get perfectly normal people all the time. So the Better Business Bureau is certainly a resource. There's other resources out there, but you got to be aware that these things do exist. They're very, very, very successful at what they do. And uh, they're organized criminal gangs, often yeah. from Nigeria, India, Russia, et cetera. Yeah. And, and it, I think what you're describing, uh, you know, obviously it's the worst part of human behavior, but the, one of the best things is we can be educating ourselves. We can be looking out for each other. And if it smells weird and looks weird, it most likely weird is weird. And I don't think a company, if you called to validate uh, whether something was correct or not, I don't think that they would begrudge you that opportunity. I think that they would welcome that because if you bring to light a scam to a bank, they're gonna they're gonna put they're gonna because that's probably not you're not probably the only customer that's being impacted. So I feel like we just have to be vi vigilant, help each other out, and also raise these issues and raise awareness. Yeah, no, this is it's all around us. If you haven't been contacted by a scam, you're going to be, and enough come in that you know one will slip through it or it sounds like a legitimate agency and you click on a link and then you they get your password um you need to be very very careful watch your bank uh, bank account check your credit card and phone bills to make sure there's not charges on those there shouldn't be there and do report it most people don't report it they're embarrassed they think it's their own fault it's and they don't know what the catch is so they think they've lost money but they don't know quite how it's like a magic trick. Once it's been done, you if they go back and do it slow, you say, oh, my God, that looks obvious. But at the time, it's not obvious. Yep. They're very, very good. And 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 so you need to watch out for these things. They're, they're very serious and they get a lot of money from a lot of people. Yeah, and I think you're absolutely right to bring up. We think that other people are going to look down on us. There is no stigma. People actually will respect other people for bringing this to light. You make a mistake. We make a mistake. We all make mistakes. We are imperfect beings. Steve, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Really important topic. And we look forward to having you back on again to share your perspective soon. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Steve. Great to see you. Thanks for sharing your perspective. That wraps up this episode of BRN AM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the information in retirement markets, technology, personal finance, so much more, Check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. We're back again tomorrow, so until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Are you being audited? And do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The Tax Doctor is here to help you negotiate your tax bill and reduce your stress. The IRS can freeze your assets and seize your bank accounts, but you can stop these IRS actions. The Tax Doctor will work with you using our years of experience to represent your case to help you get the best resolution under the IRS guidelines. Help is here to deal with the IRS to reduce your stress. We've handled thousands of cases, so we know what we're doing. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, do not call the IRS alone. Call a tax doctor now for a tax emergency analysis.
Call 800-224-6439.